guys, welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club, part three, uh, episode three. Whew! And let's get started. Another day passes, and it's time for the club meeting today. I've gotten a little bit more comfortable here over the last couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Majin Kun. Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're going. You're going to be in a good mood, or you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just, I'm still just not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to for you to get in a good mood, oh my god. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Uh, that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Uh, why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Ah, uh, ha. Uh, Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets it lets its contents spill on the desk. Only two small coins fall out. You poor broke at Mmm, you gold digger. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before you went in the club room or came in the club room. So either you're not hungry or you just wanted an excuse to take a walk. Or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that only leaves the one option. I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Uh, I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book as always. Uh, I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri, tell Majin Kun to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved with like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Uh, did I just... I, I didn't mean that. I, I got too absorbed in my book. Absorbed. Ooh. Ah, <laughs> I really like it when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That! Still, coming from you, Sayori, I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me into the club before she even told me. But... You wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes, so I had to trick Natsuki into me making them. Come on, guys, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> oh. She just got bitch slapped. What happened? Whap. Yeah! Out of, out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. It was a dick. Ow! What was. Uh, a cookie? Sure enough, it was a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. Is is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution? Retribution. Actually, that almost that one almost worked. <laughs> I was gonna just give it to you, or just gonna give it to you, but then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction though. <laughs> N Natsuki! That's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. Nom, 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 nom. Mm. Sayori suddenly cla clasps her hand over her mouth. I bit my tongue. <laughs> You're going through a, a lot over there just for one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, oh, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez, 
Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, what do you think I gave that gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> Sari gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki and then wraps her, rounds, uh, her arms around her. Ah, jeez. I get it. I get it. Cookie still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off her. Um. Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Huh. Hey! Did you seriously just do that? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Mouthful Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori... Uh... Natsuki glances around. Monica's in the club room. Uh, where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She's probably just she probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Uh, you don't think she? She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super I'm super sorry. Uh, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Uh... Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. Boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Boyfriend, Monica? Uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Uh, well, my last period was today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have to hear the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Ah, I don't really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I'll also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Majin Kun. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah, uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? Not... Not really. It looks like everyone's already sailed down. Sari somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri's back to her book and Natsuki disappeared in the closet. Meijin kun, Meijin kun! Sari suddenly comes up to me. I'm gonna go get some supplies from another classroom. Want, wanna come with me? Supplies? What for? Well, you know how the festival's coming up. Me and Monica were gonna make some posters and stuff. So I need to find some crayons, markers, glue sticks, you know, things in kindergarten and high school, you know. I see. Sure, I'll go with you. Yay! Sayori and I exit the club room. I fall behind as Sayori hums and skips around the hallway. Honestly, it feels like I'm taking a kid to the mall or something. Sayori finds pleasure in the simplest things sometimes. Hey Sayori, what exactly are we doing for the festival anyway? I'm not sure how you would make an event out of literature. <laughs> Me and Monica have it all planned out. Don't you worry. Is that so? Yep. We're gonna do a poetry performance. A performance? Of what kind? Well, everyone in everyone is gonna take turns on stage and recite their favorite poem, poem, poems. Poems. The two of us enter the classroom. Sayori sh heads straight to the closet and I follow. Let's see what we have in here. Crayons. Sayori pulls a box full of crayons off the shelf. They're the best brand too. Wait, I'm looking for my favorite color. Fine, fine. Then at least move aside so I can look for the poster paper. Uh, I dropped one by accident. She got smacked again. 
Smack. Gah! Sayori bends over and smacks her forehead right into the shelf. She falls to the floor and the crayons spill all over her lap. Ow, 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 ow. Come on, let me see. Since Sayori is sitting on the floor, I grab her by the waist and pull her out of the closet. You have to move your hand, Sayori. But it hurts. Just do it for a second. Oh boy, this is very graphic. Sayori slowly uh, releases her hands from her forehead. I gently brush her bangs to the side. Ow! Sorry. There's a huge red mark on the center of her forehead. A bump is starting to form as well. Man, that's gonna swell up. I should find you some ice. Oh god, her eye just opened. Meijin kun, where would I even find ice in, around the, around this time? Uh, I guess a cold drink would do. You don't have to. I'm fine with looking like a unicorn. Even wincing from the pain, Sayori makes a silly joke. <laughs> what are you saying? I'll be right back, okay? Okay. She has one palm on her forehead and is using the other hand to clumsily scoop crayons back into the box. At least they were already in the wrong spots before I spilled them. Sayori here. I hand Sayori this bottle of pee. It's nice and cold. Sayori opens the cap and starts drinking from it. It's for your forehead, you idiot. Ah, uh, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> How hard did you hit your head? Siri places the bottle against the bump on her head. It stings. Just bear with it, it'll feel better soon. Looks like you cleaned up most of the crayons, so that's good. Hey, Meijin Kun. This kind of reminds you of growing up, doesn't it? Uh, what do you mean? You know how we used to play outside all the time? You can't be sentimental when you're posed like that, Sayori. I would always try to keep up with you. You were kind of oblivious in some ways. Like, I f usually fell behind or had trouble climbing on things you did. But sometimes when I tried to do those things, I couldn't. I would get myself hurt. I'd fall and scrape myself or get a bump. And I would start crying really hard. <laughs> and you would rush over as quick as you could. You would try to get, you would try really hard to get me to stop crying. It was almost like you blamed yourself and were afraid of getting in trouble if someone found out. Come to think of it, maybe I do remember a bit. I guess I was always so confused on my games that I didn't pay enough attention to you. So in a way, it was my fault. Kind of like this time too. If I wasn't rushing you out of the closet, you probably wouldn't hit your head or have hit your head. Meijin Kun, I don't think you realize it, but you're always thinking about other people, even after all these years. You're rushing to help me even though I'm just being clumsy. You really are a sweetheart. Ooh, she closed her eyes with a bottle of pee, guys. That's a good sign. Don't call me that. And I really, I don't really do this kind of thing all the time. I guess when it comes to you, it just feels natural. Before I even know it, I'm treating you like that. I guess that's what happens when you've been friends for so long. Really? Maybe you're right. Meijin Kun, I'm so glad nothing's changed between us. This this pose means a lot has changed between us. Do you think it'll be like this forever? Forever? If I'm being honest to myself, uh, there's no telling where we'll end up for college and after I, or little after that or or after that. So it wouldn't be fair to me to make any promises. But well, I hope so. It's been this long already, right? I can't imagine you ever changing, so my hopes are up. I'm so happy. Sayori has a whimsical expression in her eyes. We remain silent for a moment. She's still holding a bottle of pee. Ah! She clutches her forehead again. Don't stand up so fast after hurting yourself. Well, I guess it's too late now. Anyways, let's go. You're back. Good timing. I was just about to start sharing our poems. Uh, Sayori, your forehead. She's fine. Don't worry about... I was playing with the crayons and smacked my forehead into the shelf. Uh, uh, well, anyway. 
were you able to find everything we need? Uh-huh, I have it right. Ah. Uh. Sayori frantically glances around herself. I forgot all the stuff. Calm down, Sayori. I have it all right here. I found the poster paper, too. <laughs> Sounds like you ended up doing all the work, Meijin Kun. Ah, uh, well, Sayori. I failed to come up with an excuse for Sayori. I made it an adventure. Yeah, that. <laughs> okay, okay. In any case, good work. I'll start working on the posters tonight. Me too. Okay, everyone. Are you ready to share your poems? Guess I should grab mine. Asian Kun, I really love your poems. I can't believe you're hiding these from me. I'm not hiding anything, but your poems are so good. Yesterday's and this one too. You can you can't tell me you haven't done this before. I mean, you're really the only one who feels this way, so. Uh, no way! Not even Natsuki? Well, I guess Natsuki is the least likely to admit how much she likes something. But I don't think it's that. What do you mean? Well, I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. Ah! Uh, Wama! I just mean that you're really an expressive person, I guess. How am I supposed to write poems about my stupid life? But you somehow make everything in your life an adventure. Even the little things. Like cooking. Let's not talk about that. Uh, so yeah. I guess what I'm saying is that I can feel more feelings through you than I can through myself. We have that kind of weird connection. The spiritual connection. The sexual connection. The physical connection. Yeah. It's your fault for getting in my business all the time. Uh, I don't know if I understand. <sighs> you never understand when I try to explain things to you, do you, Sayori? I pat Sayori's head. <laughs> hey, I'm not kidding, you know. Are you sure about that? Mm, maybe. Sayori starts fiddling with her pencil between her hands. Hey, Meijin Kun, will you give me your poem? I kind of want to keep it. Uh, why? Because, well, it's the first time you've written something for me. <laughs> I didn't write this for you. <laughs> <sighs> Are you even listening anymore? Well, whatever. I'll give it to you when we go home. Really? Ah! I broke my pencil. Siri hastily bends down to pick up the piece she dropped. But being in inattentive to her surroundings, she bumps right into me. S sorry uh, it's fine, it's fine. I'll get it for you. I bend down and pick up the broken pencil. Sari clutches the desk behind her to support herself. Knees shaking. I'm a little clumsy today. <laughs> Let's sit down, Sayori. Yeah. I grab Sayori's arm and help her sit at the desk. Anyways, I still haven't read your poem. Oh. Sorry, I forgot all about that. But it's not as good as yours. Jeez, don't worry. I'm sure I'll like it. Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like bundles of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe, and I put the bottle on my shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and bottles all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Even each bottle a starlight that makes amends. Sometimes my friends feel a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper, my fingers go. Like a spoon in a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like any time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done, I open up and in come my friends. And they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each of every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and shards all over the floor. 
They were supposed to be my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Not creepy at all. These poems are getting a little creepy. Holy crap. Exactly. Sayori, did you re did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Maka taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. You must be depressed or something. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe just because I'm so used to you being so cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking, but, well, I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. It feels like, or I feel like, I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah, writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Ah, uh, don't get ahead of yourself. Don't. You have time. Sayori has always had a habit about getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Hmm. Well, it's not really any worse than your last one. But I can't really say it's any better either. Phew. Huh? What? Phew what? Uh, well... Anything that isn't a train wreck, I'll take as a win. And I get the feeling you're probably the most critical. Hey, what what makes you... Wait, maybe that was a compliment. Ah, uh, glad to see someone recognizes my experience. Well then, keep practicing and maybe you'll be as good as me someday. That's a... Uh, something tells me Natsuki completely missed the point. Come to think of it, this reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. Eh, you think so? Yeah, well, I guess if you've been better friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never struck me as her type. Siri has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so uh, fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around dead weight. Ugh, that was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way, if it weren't for me, she would probably just fly away like letting go of the balloon. You could say we take care of each other in our own way. Well, whatever it is, I don't get it. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard singing from my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Uh, one time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders so her hands probably are gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has the hob has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. <clears throat> and I'm going to tell everyone. That was a little mean. Not too bad, right? It's quite a little, uh, quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I just, I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Uh, yeah, sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like, anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? 
Of course, it's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It can't be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out. They make fun of you and think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it's making them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. And I'm sure that other people can too. It's what I do best after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like conveying emotions is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm going to write a good one for tomorrow, so look forward to it. Hello, Yuri. Let's see what you're rooting for today. Da 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 da. Mm. Well done, Mijinkin. Your skills are already improving. Really? Thanks, Yuri. Coming from you, that means a lot. Uh, it's nothing. Uh, I'm just happy to help inspire fellow writers. I know you're new to this, so don't worry if don't worry so much if it seems like you can't get your poem to feel perfect. You don't need to be afraid about being a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings and write down the things you see in here. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very in intimate exercise. I see. That's a certainly interesting technique. That's certainly an interesting turkey. Bleh, bleh, bleh. Yuri nods and timidly hands me her poem. <clears throat> okay, the raccoon. Let's see. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by, a s by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unor unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences, well aware that the raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my knife cut well, my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my cut my hungry curiosity, the raccoon and urge. The moon increments its phase and reflects the more much but much more light of my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft, the raccoon becomes excited. On perhaps I'm merely projecting I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly silent newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more, more and more frequently, so my bread is always in, is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me excitement. A rush of blood, classic Pavlovian, Pavloni, wait, Pavlovian? I don't know what that says. Conditioning. I slice the bread, and I feed myself again. Okay. Weird poems today, guys. Weird, weird poems. Sayori's was weird, really weird. Echoes, 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 thoughts, thoughts, thoughts. Um, I was a little bit more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem's about. Nah, I feel the same. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I want to express, my, express the way it feels for me to indulge in more unusual hobbies. It's the sort of things that I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So, I sometimes enjoy writing about them. <laughs> That's funny. Didn't Natsuki also write something about that? 
about something being ridiculed or for a strange interest? Uh, she did? Yeah, uh, she was talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody. She's, she's right. I mean, does she really feel that way? Yeah, sounds like you two have something in common. That's, well, that's interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. But I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? Uh, please, please don't tell her I said that. <laughs> I, I Don't worry, I have no reason to. Okay, well, thank you for sharing it with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I'd probably hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. Hi again, Majin Kun. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. <laughs> I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Alright. It's pretty good. It makes me think of Sayori, like the other one that you wrote. You two are like the dynamic duo. <laughs> That's kind of exaggerating it. Yeah, probably, but you do spend a lot of time with her, even in this club, don't you? Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. I'm not shy, I just, it's just, <laughs> I'm only just teasing. I know it takes a bit of time to make friends with everyone, but Yuri and Natsuki are super interesting people, so don't be afraid to give them their share of time. And you can talk to me every now and then too. I'm not like unapproachable or anything, am I? Uh, no, it's nothing like that. No, baby, it's okay. I'm just getting used to being here, that's all. Yeah, I'm sorry if I was putting pressure on you or something. I really didn't mean it like that. No, don't, don't worry. I get what you're saying. Uh, well, all right. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like this. I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. All right, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors, flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, and blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. A violent, grating waveform, squeaking, screeching, piercing, sine and cosine, tangent, like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me? Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? Yeah, that was kind of weird. <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just a kind of thing that I've never really seen before, I guess. Choosing where and how, you, how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. True? It's almost like magic. The way I wrote those lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what's, about, what's it about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be abstract as a physical expression of a feeling or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. gonna save my game you never know when you might want to change your mind or when something unexpected may happen wait is this even a tip about writing what am I even talking about ah, ha, ha, ha. that's my advice for today you know Monica that was really creepy advice thanks for listening
Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Uh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We don't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. We're going to be performing. Performing? Puh. Monica, yeah, we're going to have be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite their poems too. Sayori's putting it on all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Uh, well, I did. Do you really think it's a bad, I bad of an idea? Well, no, it's not a bad idea, but I didn't sign up for this, you know? There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I agree with Antsuki. I, I could never in my life do something like that. Imagine it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys, no, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago? It's a lot for them to ask to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that, so I'm sorry. <sighs> but I still think we should give it our best, our, our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put out a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah, it's about expressing your feelings and being intimate with yourself and finding new horizons and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're in the, all in this club here today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feeling that brought you here in the first place? And if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. <laughs> Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me with no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been really trying hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a bit. Well, maybe, but... Uh, it looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright! Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else ex everyone else's expectant faces. Uh, I, I guess I don't really have a choice. <laughs> That's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh, you'll, you'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. N no way, Monica. This is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite a poem in front of the club, how do you expect yourself to do it in front of strangers? Uh, no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now let's see. Maka flips through her notebook to the specific poem that she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. <clears throat> okay, wait. Before they start reading poems, because I didn't know they were going to do this, I'm going to save right now. I'm going to save right now. Right there. We're going to save right here. We're going to save right here. And I'm going to end the episode. So thank you guys for watching Doki Doki Literature Club. This is episode 3. 
that shit was weird what Monica said at the end of her poem. That's been freaking me out ever since. She said, remember to save your game. That was creepy. So thank you guys for checking out Doki Doki Literature Club. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share, and yeah, I'll see you guys next time for a new video. Peace.